Hello and welcome to the show. Now, well, after a long time, social activist on my show, Yusuf Abaramji. I've been trailing him for a while. I've been following his stories. I've been looking at his life's journey, and now it's a journey encapsulated in a particular publication which I think you're calling the Coffee Table Publication, Hajj 2016, but we're going to talk about that. But before I go there, I like going into the aspects of what comprises a particular person, why I find them interesting, and then to understand their work. Yusuf, welcome to the show. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you, Brother Faisal, and, and lovely being in the Dean TV studios uh, here Finally. in Cape Town. Finally. Finally. Shukran. Well, it's uh, our pleasure, I must say. Now, we, we look at this publication that you recently put out there and, and people have been following what you've been doing from the Hajj and then to encapsulate that in a particular book, as you might say. But before we go there, I sort of want to delve into you as a person. I know that we have an interesting journey there. Where did all that start and how do you define Yusuf? Well, uh, I'm from uh, the capital city of Pretoria, born and bred in Pretoria, did my schooling there. Uh, became a teacher at the Transvaal College of Education. Always wanted to be a journalist from a very young age. Uh, I suppose comes from my father and grandfather, uh, always reading the newspapers and listening to the radio. Um, and after a year, became a spokesman for the Department of Education in the Administration House of Delegates. Uh, subsequently, uh, joined the SABC as a parliamentary reporter, uh, became a sub-editor in Johannesburg, uh, went back to my community uh, where I launched a uh, community newspaper, revived it, uh, and then subsequently joined uh, Talk Radio 702 uh, as a young freelance reporter in Pretoria. And over the past 21 years, uh, I was with the company uh, in various positions, a full-time reporter, acting news editor, crime editor, uh, became the station manager of 702 and then the head of news and current affairs and also very actively involved in the establishment of the civil society movement uh, called Lead South Africa and Crime Line. Uh, and yes, in December last year I decided to move on uh, and wanted to be my own boss for a change and uh, Alhamdulillah uh, a year later uh, that's exactly what I'm doing, consulting, doing social cohesion, uh, the CEO sleep part I'm actively involved in and trying to do a bit of good with projects like these, trying to do a bit of charity in a very small way. So uh, that's, a, that's a quick round circle, but a very active and busy one and sort of having your tentacles into everything. Very interesting. But uh, tell us about the family life. Uh, how do you cope with all of that? amidst what you do? Well, I think keeping a balance is important. And as you know, with, with a media fraternity, being a journalist for the largest chunk of my life, um, you have very little family time, you have very little commitment. Every day is different and that is what uh, kept me going over the years so that in the morning, as much as you have a diary, your diary changes at very short notice, you change your plans, uh, you have to go out and network. Um, and I think that these are challenges that we have every day. And I often say to my friends and to, and to, and to the people out there, uh, when you get up in the morning and you don't feel like going to work because you're not enjoying it, go and find a new job. Uh, because I think that is what, what, what we need in whatever we do, uh, whether you're a social activist, whether you're a magistrate, whether you're a teacher, whether you're a social worker, is you need to put your heart and your passion into what you do, otherwise you won't get job satisfaction. Correct is, uh, well they say that people that do what they want to do and live what they do, they never really work a particular day Absolutely. because they're not at work. Yeah. And I suppose you in that, so people wonder why at 11 o'clock at night you're still doing what you do, but that's because you're not really working, that's just you. We have to pay the rental, Faisal, we have to pay the bills, so as much as we're doing it uh, for out of love and, and, and the passion, uh, and that, that is a core in what we're doing. And I think that is why I always talk of the philosophy of becoming an active citizen. We know the government of South Africa, the National Development Plan, talks about becoming an active citizen. And really every individual, whether you're fighting crime, whether you're fighting corruption, whether you want leadership, uh, whether you're assisting charities, is if you put your heart and your soul to it and we put South Africa first, we'll be able to make a difference, I believe. 100%. And I see today you came decked out in your South African uh, flag slash t-shirt and uh, so I know that you take activism and you take brand South Africa very seriously. Indeed, I think it's important for us. I think it's important for us to have national pride. When you're patriotic to the country doesn't mean you're patriotic to the government or the president. Um, and I often say the government will get our support when they deserve it. 
Uh, they will get our criticism when they deserve it. But the first thing we must remember is that we are South African. We were born here. Our, f our f grandfathers were born here. Many of us, our fathers were born here. Uh, our mums were born here. And we need to put South Africa first. And I think being patriotic, uh, when you talk about Ubuntu, when you talk about the, the, the uh, national anthem, uh, when you talk about the South African flag, we have to be proud South Africans. And as you know, uh, I've been very passionate about driving a number of initiatives like Football Friday, Protea Friday, um, the Olympic Friday, and so on, because I believe national pride is so important. I mean, ev I even went as far as uh, having a kurta um, uh, during my two book launches in Johannesburg and Cape Town uh, with my logo, which is the South African flag colors. I, uh, I saw that, yeah. I, that. That really makes you feel proud to be South African because uh, let's be proud, we are South African. What a beautiful country. Uh, as much as we have uh, problems, the government calls them challenges, um, I think that uh, we all need to be proud South Africans. Correct, yes. So you go on Hajj now in 2016. And you, you come back and you publish this particular publication, which we are showing our viewers uh, right now. Where did that idea come from? You say it's your first Hajj, but was the idea or the intention to share that journey with everyone? Or did that sort of come along as you were on the journey itself? I haven't been for Hajj. Uh, it was my first Hajj. I, I went on Umrah eight years ago. Um, I decided that I want to go on Hajj and Alhamdulillah, um, I often say that um, it's not the Saudi embassy, they might give you a physical visa, but you go to the kingdom, to the holy land at the invitation of, of the Almighty. Um, I applied for accreditation to Sahuk. I waited for many, many years. I wasn't accredited. Uh, my name didn't come on a list this year. And luckily, um, I approached the uh, embassy in Pretoria and they afforded uh, us courtesy visas. Um, and, uh, and that made it possible. I may add that I, I've been invited as a guest of the kingdom over the years as a journalist, as part of the King's program. I never took up the invitations for a number of reasons because I thought my first search I want to go on my own steam. Um, two weeks before I left Faisal, uh, the ambassador called me and said that they have a Saudi TV crew in South Africa. They would like to follow one pilgrim, his journey right from the home into the airport, into the kingdom. And they wanted to know whether I would be able to, to assist them. And I kindly agreed, very reluctantly, I may add, and they chose one pilgrim from Cape Town. I then accompanied them on the flight on Saudi Airlines uh, to the kingdom. We arrived there, we did some filming. Uh, and then I said goodbye to them in Medina. Uh, my intention was never to go and publish a coffee table book during this journey. Oh, wait, wait. You, said, you said goodbye to them in Medina? Yeah. Or, or are you saying you didn't follow through with that? No, no, no. I mean, that was where the program ended because they wanted yeah. to show it in Medina. I mean, they didn't want to, it was just following the, 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 the journey from South Africa into... Oh, into I see. So it, wa it wasn't... It wasn't the, the Hajj. It wasn't, it okay, wasn't right. Hajj. It, was a, it was a run up to the, to the Hajj. Um, I never intended publishing a coffee table book. Had I in, they had the intention of coming back with a book, I would have taken a good camera with me, uh, possibly a video camera, and believe it or not, I took my uh, iPhone 6 Plus, uh, this is now the iPhone 7, and all the photos I took along the journey uh, as part of my tweet just, and just, just part of my Facebook. Just while you mentioned the iPhone. Uh, you specifically chose the iPhone no. for quality purposes. I've sort. always been an iPhone fan. Okay. Uh, I've always carried an iPhone, thank you. And I, <laughs> they take us nowadays. And I even have the iPhone, and I don't get paid royalties or endorsement fees, by the way. In fact, I don't even get my phone free of charge. <laughs> exactly. Um, what happened was, um, and I thought I'm going to have a quiet touch. That was my intention. Arrived in Jeddah on Saudi Airlines. Went through uh, the Hajj terminal, very friendly immigration people, only seven people on this flight, only seven people in the Hajj terminal. And I asked them, is it, is it time for Hajj? Because Did all the wrong, horror stories are here. I read it in the wrong country. Oh, I read it, <laughs> I read it in the wrong country. Uh, Janubi Africa, uh, immigration officials, very friendly. Mandela, we try to speak with broken English uh, to them um, because we don't talk Arabic fluently. Um, then made our way to, to Medina. But before we went to Medina, a friend of mine, uh, who's the uh, anchor, uh, uh, presenter on SAFM, who does the media f show, Ashraf Garda, sent me a message on WhatsApp to say, I love your, your, your tweet. Why don't you just start a hashtag, Hajj2016 uh, and Abramji on Hajj, and share your journey, which, which I did with a few tweets. And before I knew, not thinking much, about not thinking much and before I knew, um, hundreds of tweets went out. Uh, wherever I could get chance along the journey during the ziyarat, the touring, uh, be it at the tomb of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, uh, the architecture of the Haram in Medina, 
um, and, and, and the rest is history. Um, I tweeted, I Facebooked, I did live video footage across so, so uh, along the way. 